Okay, I think we're live now after a few sky pickups. So welcome everyone to uh, the next part of our um, Star to the Number campaign. We're on session 12, and it's going to be a little bit of a shorter session tonight, right, Jimmy? We're just doing mm -hmm. a ship-to-ship -ship combat. Yep. Um, so or yeah. Or whatever happens. Or, this encounter. Or whatever happens. The but... scene. <laughs> But I'll go right across the top. Um, we have uh, Buddy Apache playing Atlas, who's, you get a look at his lovely uh, profile picture right there. Uh, <laughs> we got Dart playing Max. We got Jason playing Varlo. Myself playing Selfie. And as always, our Space Master, Space Mastering by Jimmy. Um, Cheerio, fellas. Yeah. So, right. yeah, let's dive into it. I know I've skipped the round table a couple times, but um, shorter sessions, I like to get more play session in. So let's do it. Yeah, so uh, quick recap, because we're going to get into the, the meat of uh, what's going on right now. But uh, where last we left the crew of the Vanderhorn, they were headed to the uh, a system to, to do a job with Briggs University. And they entered a system known as the Oneus system. Um, the Oneus system had kind of a rough um, asteroid belt with a lot of old ship debris and is generally a, a difficult um, area region of this system to traverse to get to the uh, the core planet um, where Briggs University was set up where they needed to pick up cargo that they were supposed to deliver. Uh, it so happened the party didn't know this immediately but upon entering the asteroid field they were picked up on scan and uh, the Vanderhorn crew, in turn, did not uh, was not able to counter or counter track their whatever was tracking them. So little to the uh, little did the crew know that they were being watched um, by ship or station based scanners as they crossed the asteroid field. But they made it through the first time with no problem. Nobody harassed them. They made it to Briggs University on uh, around a. Um, uh, a moon base that is orbiting the, the central planet. Um, met an interesting, uh, crazy scientist looking dude. Uh, <laughs> name I don't have off the top. Uh, Dr. Ignatius Lloyd, who, um, with little, uh, with little setup in the way of, um, research or background investigation, the crew did, they found that they were, um, taking a job from a eugenics cult and that they in particular had, models of um, sex slaves, um, 50 in number, that was their cargo, to be delivered to um, the city of New Jerusalem uh, on the planet Al-Masari, their home planet and home city for much of the crew. Um, uh, despite some hand-wringing or concerns about the ethics of their cargo, uh, they were informed that they would be delivering um, this to the to the uh, a member of uh, what is known as the Toruno Triad, a uh, criminal gang element that is on New Jerusalem. They said, F it, load the cargo up. So they, they shuttled 50 uh, human forms, humans, although they don't have all of the human characteristics. We can sort of investigate them later. But they loaded the cargo up. They're sort of crouched in the cargo hold of the Vanderhorn, and they took off. And on leaving uh, the planet or the moon base, um, they were quickly tracked and followed by um, an enemy ship designated the Havoc. Uh, there was some cat and mouse play going through the asteroid belt. Um, Carmella, who was piloting the ship, managed to get, get the crew to um, evade um, for the time being to, sh to shake the sensor lock that the Havoc had on them. Um, but since they were making the Havoc took a gamble um, and guessing that they would be headed in a similar direction out of system that they entered um, and was waiting for them basically on the other side of the asteroid belt. Um, times like those that sometimes creative action maybe sticking and hiding in the asteroid belt would have hid the crew of the Vanderhorn and they could have come up with another plan. But the Havoc correctly anticipated where they were going and as we as they exited the asteroid field, um, ship to ship, a ship to ship encounter was begun. Uh, we reviewed a little bit of uh, what everyone does, what their commands posts are, 
uh, when we do ship combat. But why don't we review that now as, as sort of like setting the scene, um, alarm bells are going off and um, Rosebud, the computer, is saying, alert, alert, ship lock, um, contact imminent from unidentified vessel, Havoc. Alert, alert. And so at this point, you all break to your various stations. Where do you go? Remind us. Take this Maximus out. goes to the guns. <laughs> so yeah, boom, Maximus heads over to the the, the little seated uh, virtual display that's got a little, yeah, it's got the, the Millennium Sky Falcon as this shit. Yeah. Yep. Um, sort of display and, and rotating gyroscope chair to be able to pilot the guns. Um, where does Varlo go? Varlo just like <laughs> breaks through the uh, the door and heads down to engineering. Cool, engineering, and yeah, you guys are all assumed to be on comms throughout the ship, unless something in communications gets interrupted, ship damage or etc. Okay. Uh, um, Atlas, where do you head? He's a communications officer, so he Got sits it. right next to the helm. Yeah, so you're right next to um. Uh, the piloting desk. Um, I believe Carmela stays at her seat and is the um, is the uh, bridge uh, the bridge actions, um, which is basically what the pilot is doing. Uh, and Selfie steps forward, puts on a headset, and assumes the mantle of captain for this ship, which is important because everyone can act independently, but you are the one to. Um, guide the ship's strategy in terms of how the ship, who you advise people, how they should see either gain command points or how to spend them. And obviously they can listen or not listen to you. Um, Joran's yeah. as well is down in, um, he's in engineering with uh, Varlo assisting. Also engineering is right by the cargo bay. So he's keeping an eye on the cargo. Um, so uh, Carmela says, all right, boys, taking taking uh, approach maneuvers. Can't shake them now. And, and it's going to be a couple minutes as the ships close. It's kind of a, a little cat and mouse, but where the concentric circles are circling towards each other, sort of trying to find the best advantage. You, Selfie, have a moment um, as the, the star field flashes before you, and you see an indicator on sort of some sort of radar scan um, indicating the ship, the Havoc, approaching. Um, you can see that um, Carmela set you up well, that you guys are going to have, have the advantage of, of first strike um, or first, first, your first chess move in this, in this battle. But you have a moment to plan with the crew as you've got your headset on. Plan action. What's your approach here? Um, I w I'm wondering, are we within rep weapons range like immediately, or do we need to take... So this is before <clears throat> turn order officially begins. I'm taking a page out of the book you just mentioned. You guys have a moment to talk amongst yourselves about how you want to approach this. Right. I'm... You want to disable gotcha. their... Gotcha, okay. Yeah, this is... Yeah, you don't have to... Yes, you will be... When your turn comes, you will be close enough to shoot them. Okay, thank you. That's what I was asking. Yes, yes. Okay. You will be close enough to shoot them. How how you want to shoot them, what your goal is of this encounter, um, I guess I should tell you before. you As you now approach combat... Um, uh, um, Atlas, you get a display, and you quickly... It's uh, information feed from the sensors from Rosebud, and you quickly put them on um, virtual display for everybody else, and you guys see that there's a... The strike force here is a patrol boat. It's named the Havoc. Um, you can see that it is crewed by an unknown number of people, but you know that patrol boats of this size could have a cruise from anywhere from 5 to 20, depending on how lean they want to be in terms of their cargo. Uh, you can see that it is a class frigate ship. Uh, you see that its uh, armament is a plasma beam. Ooh, okay. Uh, in do comparison... We, do, do we have a plasma beam, or do we just have, like, a shitty laser cannon? You guys have, if we pull up... Yeah. You know, good time to pull up your uh, Vanderborn ship spec. Are we sharks with laser beams? We just have a Reaper battery, right? You have a Reaper battery. Um, I'll read out the differences between them real quick. So I can pull this up quick. Ship weaponry. So the Reaper battery. 
Stepped up tapping of the spike drive. Power plant allows for emissions of a torrent of charged particles. The particles have very little armor penetration, but can fry a small ship's power grid in a strike or two. Um, great small. If this was a fleet of fighters, you guys would stand. You'd be a, have a distinct advantage because they have little armor. Patrol boats do have some armor. Um, their armor is five compared to the armor three of the Vanderhorn. Armor is. Um, uh, negates damage when it goes through, basically. Um, Not on a plasma beam. <laughs> and in turn, and in turn, certain weapons such as a plasma beam have armor negating properties, armor penetration values. So the plasma beam is uh, su with superior targeting and a smaller energy drain than a than a charged particle caster. Plasma beam sacrifices some armor penetration. So the Reaper battery is three d four damage roll. Um, and it is cl uh, clumsy quality, which I'd have to look up to remember what the quality means. Uh, clumsy either through slow discharge or unwieldy engineering crimes. This weapon suffers minus four, four to hit small fighter class holes. This is not a fighter class hole, so it doesn't apply here. Um, the plasma beam is 3d6 damage versus your 3d4. It has an AP value of 10. And that's what matters to you. Okay. So... They hit you with it. It is uh, it's capable of doing pretty hefty damage. Okay. Uh, you, no. you guys have a your hull integrity. You can see is a thirty. It's your HP for the ship. Mm -hmm. uh, theirs you get a readout is twenty five. What is the possibility, Jimmy, of jettisoning me onto their ship? <laughs> so I can. I can. So I you can both both ships them. have your ship as well yeah. as raise the transporter, please. Your yeah. ship, as well as um, their ship, both have boarding tubes. Uh, actually, so yours don't have boarding tubes. Theirs do. In other words, they're able to initiate um, docking procedures and to link with your ship, cut your hull open, and be able to break in, basically. But remember that you guys have boarding countermeasures, which I believe now that Rosebud, you haven't really investigated it. You have They're not active right now, but you could, you do have Rosebud on your side now, and therefore you have some anti-personnel um, who could help you in the event of a ship boarding. Depends what uh, their intentions are, right? Did we have a shuttle, too? No, you do not have a okay, shuttle. Okay, never mind. I'm making that up. I have, like, a, a crude, like, chassis for, like, a crude, like, one-man vehicle, but not, like, a proper shuttle. Sure. No, yeah, and that's a land-based, it's a land-based craft that you yeah. have. Okay. No, the shuttle was our last campaign, Kevin. That you had a little, a little. Right. I mean, I know we had that shuttle, but I, for some reason, I thought in this picture there's like a shuttle next to it. But I think that maybe I was imagining something else. Yeah. No. You have both. Both ships have atmospheric configuration, meaning you can enter an atmosphere and land on a planet or a moon or wherever. Gotcha. So you don't need to have a, a flyaway shuttle. Okay. Um. I guess I. So strategy. Yeah. Blast over the comms and. Uh, say max what do you think our odds are at weapons on weapons combat here they got us beat okay um, indeed if we uh, sustain uh, any amount of damage at all the hull it'll um kebab think kebab and then empty vacuum of space and then all of us dead so um... i out shoot them i can do it okay then let's have you on shoot and comms let's Get you to uh, give us some bonus to our ACs, huh? Not our ACs, just bonus to our shields. What's an AC? I don't know. All power to shields. <laughs> Forward shields, go. <laughs> Target their weapon systems. <laughs> Use the boost to get through. <laughs> Sounds like a Star Trek character. Cool, so it's yeah. definitely going to be taking the fight, comms. Um... Yeah, the specific sense. Uh, yeah, I'm hitting yeah, sensor, ghost. sensor ghost. So that ability. Cost, just remember that cost command point. So you're gonna want you're gonna want to advise your other departments, yes. or you're gonna want to make sure that before you start firing or whatever you're gonna do, that you're gonna um, be gaining command points. So yes, I was just looking at. Uh, Carmela pipes up and says, "Hey, uh, self. Uh, just so you know, uh, if you wanted to uh, make a quick getaway." And there's there's some rumbling as as she's taking the ship through through beginning maneuvers. She's like, if you're gonna want to make getaway, 
I'm pretty good, but the ship's just as fast as we are. So it's just it's pilot on pilot there. Gotcha. Perhaps we can attempt to um, disrupt their um, their ability to give chase, and then we just blow past them. Perhaps we don't target their weapon systems. Perhaps we target their engine. Let's just fucking kill them. I, yeah, I think we just we just kill them or disable them enough where we can uh, get on them or something. Bo board, yeah, I would like to disable them and board them and take their ship. That is the ideal the ideal thing that happens here is okay. we get another ship. <laughs> Well, Cold dead hands. We'll, we'll see. Cold we'll, dead hands. We'll see what happens, Maximus. Okay. Um. So again, so we're starting. We start at zero command points, right? And we build up command points each turn. We can use them as we go. Yes, they do okay. not carry over per round. So, in other words, you bank up what you want to do for that that particular turn, and then they reset back to zero, and you have to do it all over again. So you really have to have focused effort like you can't build up over say a couple turns right like 15 command points and then blast everything so decide what you want to do on the first turn if it sounds like if the goal is to say we're going to start shooting first and then figure things out later then make sure that you're all that you're guiding the crew to collect command points okay then did i don't I... really need to be doing much at, on engineering until we get into damage zones so I can focus on creating uh, command points for us until we sustain damage, or I need to react to like a crisis or something. And then if a, and if a crisis happens, Varlo is the first person that should respond to it because I could probably react to it with a fix or a program roll easier. Okay, sorry, I mm, I know Got I can. Question? I know, I so I have a captain action that says I can, where do we get command points? So if you go to the general action, so everybody can either take their specific crew action within their department or take a general action, one or the other, right? I, basically. Right, I know. And I know command how to points spend are do, do your duty is the general, see if you go to general actions on page 117, yep. do your duty, the ship gains one command point. Um, as captain, you can support department which doesn't cost command points and it reduces command point cost right um you can do into the fire which would gain you a command point but you essentially take on a voluntarily take on a crisis to do so okay sorry i thought we started with like a bank up front but I guess no not. okay cool. npc npc ships do basically they don't have to maybe that's they, what they i read it a little bit down. okay then we're gonna we're going to put some people up front that don't do anything, and then uh, I guess put comms engineering last, and you guys can use some command points, huh? Roger, roger. Com comms and engineering first. Yeah, we should be generating the uh, the command points I'm sorry, yes. for the gunnery and yourself, and or for uh, the gunnery and the pilot. Okay, so um, you've got... I, let me sketch... Sorry, I put com, comms and gunnery last because comms can give us the AC bonus. We don't want to get hit. Right. Well, that's your question. You can wait on comms if you want to decide to spend it on the AC bonus. Oh, I guess the um, same thing. They can give us the AC bonus for pilots yeah, or we'll comms. See. Okay, so let's you, do bridge you, and gunnery you last. Call, you call them out. So you've got, just to sketch the scene, because I think Maximus is sell this. He's charged up the, the uh, Reaper battery, yep. and it's there, and he's going, let me shoot him. Let me fucking shoot him. I mean, Carmel is steering the ship, and there's a, alarm bells going off, and everything goes red for a moment. And uh, Carmela says, uh, I can hold her here. I'll make sure we stay as best we can out of the direct line of fire from that, from that plasma beam. And, sure. um, yeah, she's steering the ship with skill and uh, is doing her duty. Sure. So, boom. Ship Vanderhorn has one command point. Gotcha. Call out what you okay. want. Who you want to go next? Uh, engineering. I do my duty. Yeah. Tell me about what you're doing right now. How you keeping? How? You, what does your duty look like? So, like, we haven't engaged in the combat yet. So you see, probably like Joran looking over Varlo's shoulder as he's pulling up all of the different readings for like the hull integrity and the shield si like systems, and he's like quickly looking over like the different um, like energy outputs for every different system on the ship and looking for any kind of fluctuations. And calls back to a selfie. I, it uh, looks like everything is uh, nominal at the moment. Uh, we are as ready as we'll ever be for this. Uh, just, uh, well, let's do it. Awesome. 
Two command points gained. Call All right. your shot. Call your next uh, your next department. Uh, I guess I'll do mine. I'm going to choose a department for support department. Okay. Um, and I will give that to the gunnery. Nice. So one action that you take will cost two fewer command points. So how are you support? What are you calling out to Maximus? Um, I don't know. I'm. It doesn't have to be words. You could be. You could I, be messing with controls. Yeah, I'm messing or... messing controls and diverting a little bit of power into the gun reaction. I guess. Yeah. So actually, you see, um, you see the 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 comms. This is just for flavor, Alice. But you see the comms flicker before you, and some of your like more nuanced sensor systems sort of dim and flicker, but nothing important happens. But you can see the power go, and and the Reaper battery is charged and spiked energies are being sucked into this undercarriage of his big fat battery that the that the uh vanderhorn has underneath and it looks ready to pop but who's next kevin let's do gunnery first all right i'm taking mm. a shot boom so you're you're uh, firing one weapon are you targeting systems or firing all guns i'm just firing all guns okay so you so this is, okay, two fewer, so it's going to cost one command point. Fire all guns. So there's only one weapon. There's <laughs> only one um, gun. Actually, so I was going to say. You should just, you should just <laughs> fire uh, the one weapon because it's only one weapon anyway. Okay. You don't get a bonus for firing all weapons unless you have multiple weapons. Okay. So you guys have just the reaper battery, but it's free. It doesn't cost command points because of the extra power that Selfie diverted over. So go ahead and make your roll. So what do I roll? So ship combat. My I think it's just your shoot when plus. When the ship fires and choose any target, either gunnery, blah, 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 nominate PC. Gunner rolls a normal hit roll using their base attack bonus plus the better of their intelligence or dex mod plus their shoot skill. If flying... Oh, yes. Both side that normally give bonuses to shoot attacks such as Gunslinger do not apply to the ship combat as specifically noted as doing. So it's just, do you have Gunslinger? I don't remember. Uh, I might actually. No, I don't. The luck. Okay, so it's fine. The luck ability of the warrior class may be used once per fight to hit with the ship's guns, but it cannot be used to negate a hit against the, your ship. So, so I can you can do to make sure I hit. You so you can do an auto hit at any point, but uh, it's only once in this fight. Okay. Can you do that after you make the roll? Uh, no. You, uh, yeah, I would, let's see. They have actually this sketched out. Yeah, no, you have to declare ahead of time if you're doing auto-hit. That, that makes sense. Okay. All right, Max, fire away. So I, so I could say I target their engines and then decide I auto-hit, right? Yeah, so you can do target system. You can do target systems, which is the... So that's the the third gunnery action. That's fire one weapon, um, and you tell me what system you're targeting. Um, such target attacks take minus four. On a hit, do half damage before applying armor. If the damage gets through, if any damage gets through at all, the system is disabled or a drive. So if, is so if I target a specific system, I'm doing half damage. Yes. But um, the trade off is a ship. But the trade off is so any damage will go to the ship's HP. But if you do damage at all. If it gets through the armor, remember they have uh, armor of uh, five. So if you do greater than five damage, whatever you roll halved, the sh that system you target is disabled. So both the HP effects, but you also disable whatever the system is. Then they would so have to use either way. So if you so wanted to auto hit their, say their their gun their plasma cannon, which I would let you do, you can say I auto hit this. Roll your damage. You would need to get better than. Uh, a five. Okay. Um, so you'd roll three d four plus your bonus, um, your your attack bonuses and, or your damage bonuses in the same way, and divided by two. And if that's greater than five, you would disable the system and do that much do that much damage over the five. So if you rolled like a seven, you would disable so, the okay, plasma so cannon I, and do two HP. So if I hit the system, I disable it. Basically, yeah. if you do, if well, you have to do damage and surpass their armor value to disable it. But if I target a specific system, I do half damage. Right. Yes. Exactly. So I would have Before to roll more than ten. Yes. On three d four. Yep. Yes. 
guys, I'd have to roll almost max damage. Yep. To do what, that. what bonuses do you get to damage roll? I don't think you get bonuses to damage rolls. Yeah, I think unless you, you burst. Yeah, no, that's true. Um, you don't get bonuses to damage. Our, sh our 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 specific gun is really bad at destroying specific systems. Uh, yeah, cert certain ones do, but yours does not. not okay, I'm just gonna shoot their normal ship, and uh, I'll just I'm gonna save my guaranteed hit for now. Oh no! So you get whatever your if you're shooting you your dex mod adds to damage. It's so a plus it be, one. Yeah, so three d four plus one. I mean. Take that yeah. for what you will, yeah. but you yeah, do get yeah. that. Yeah. All right, so I'm just going to shoot their normal ship. Okay, so you take fire one weapon. So you charge up the Reaper battery, and it's eager to fire off, and then bolts of, like, spike energy go out. Fuck, um, I should have done it! <laughs> boom. God! The, the, apparently the powering up of this ship was well. You rolled three fours! Um, <laughs> oh! <laughs> Nice roll. Never give up. Trust your instincts. So you <laughs> unleash. Oh, betrayed me. The Vanderhorn's been eager to fire this gun, which it has not done under your tenure yet, apparently, because it, black energies that sort of just suck as you like. You see this like cluster of black voids where there was like you see them go out and zap out, and where they were, like the stars sort of warp around them, like there are spots of negative energy go out and collide as the havoc sort of moves into positions, collides with the hull of the havoc, shaking it hard. Um so that's thirteen HP done, uh reduced by five uh for their armor value, and that's down to whew that's a hefty hit. So that would be uh, minus five. So it's eight damage. Yeah. And what does the Havoc do in response? They just blow up. Fries. Um, Morale decimated. Shit, these guys are good shots. What the fuck? Wait, yeah. We, I, don't, I think... Doesn't comms get a go still? Yes, they they still do. Just okay. this is still we're still resolving the gunnery. Actions. Oh, okay. Sorry, it's fine. So, uh, yeah, I don't actually know. Okay, so the the captain of this ship, um, you don't see them, but you see the ship just like. Shots rip across its hull. Its shields go down a, a tick, like this glowing indicator. And there's, like, obvious hull damage that's taken. Um, it seems that the ship has taken the hit um, because there's no fires or any sort of indicators in the Rosebud sensors that anything has happened on the ship uh, other than sort of just eating a huge hit. Um, so 25 minus 8 uh, would be down to 2017. In the first round. Cool. So they they the captain eats the hit. Eager eager to believe that he's got you outgunned and doesn't think that uh your ship looks too ripe for the picking to um to threaten his crew right now. So he he accepts gladly the the damage to the strong hull of the havoc. Cool. Selfie. Right. Call uh, out next. Comms up next, last uh, station. Okay. How many command points do we have? Do we have two. Two left. Do you want me to try and do a EMC? Uh. EMC. Is it ECM. Or ECM. I'm sorry. Or uh, uh... I I suggested sensor ghost, but you oh, you sensor do ghost? you do what okay. you feel is is best. No, the ECM won't won't help us now. Okay. Yeah, ECM right. we've already shot, I guess. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's do sensor ghost then. Difficulty nine int program. There you go. Okay. I have to use an int roll, right? I can't use my. Yeah, yeah. It's got to be an int roll. All right. Well, believe. Oh, all these rules are in nine. And I got it. I got it. <laughs> you got it. So, how? What's your program check bonus? Your program check bonus is uh, plus one. Hey, I'll take it. 
Okay, so so I'm gonna let this last. Uh, so it's one round, and so it's this last until your next turn. That that actually works. Um, if you if the round had reset after this, it wouldn't have carried over. But you guys went first, so it's fine. But just know that if you were going second, you would have wanted maybe to have queued this up first. Right? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. It doesn't matter. It works. So you guys get a bonus to AC. Make a note, selfie, since you're the captain. That okay. That you're the Vanderhorn AC, uh, which is base 14 is now a 15 until yeah. after the turn. Yeah, it's just till the cool. next turn. Right. Okay. Um, so Carmella calls out and says... Uh, they spend the command points and they pick actions freely to spend them. Cool. So yeah, um, Carmela is sort of like narrating this and says, "Uh, shit, she looks like she's coming around. She's, uh, yeah. Brace for impact, everybody. Brace for impact." And the uh, the havoc uh, unloads uh its gunnery payload. Um, and they are going to attempt to, let's see. Brace for impact. Don't forget that we can accept the crisis instead of damage once, and then the captain can also do that one time. So we yep. can negate some good shit here if yep. we get hit pretty bad. Yes. Cool. Cool. So yeah, so they they take some actions on hand, um, and I'll call them out. First is they are using their plasma cannon and they are attacking. Ah uh, shit! Oh, their okay. plasma shit. beam and, and they are um, targeting your systems. They're targeting your engine systems. Uh oh. <laughs> and I gotta make sure I got their rolls right. Normal hit to roll twenty plus attack bonus. Varlo, you have good fix and program, right? I have, yeah, I'm good at both. Okay. Did I write that down? Was I smart? I was smart. Boom. The cannon goes off, and it's a glancing blow. Um, there's a, a flash of energy, and um, Carmelis like, deftly st steers the ship aside, and it's sort of, like, consumed in the energy of your spike drive, where it doesn't do anything. Um, they were clearly shooting to target your your uh, engine systems and and failed to hit. Um, oh, would, it wouldn't have mattered anyway because I it would have been a D flat D twenty so because uh, target system is a negative four to hit. But cool, yeah. They also um, we got thirty HP. Uh, I think this is Atlas. You get you get some readout, and one, two. You get a readout, and I'll tell you what it says after I make this roll. Yeah, so you get a you get a readout, um, Atlas, and it it says um, it shows that they have made a. Uh, um, they've they've done some emergency hull repairs. Apparently, they have some some hull features that put under like a a carapace like repair gel that sort of comes out and fixes blasted holes. Um, so you can call it what you want, but basically, they did damage control as an engineering action. Um, okay. And a repair number of lost hit points equal to your fix skill times two times three. So it's they gain three hit points back. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to write down damage control plus 3 HP equals 20. Good. Round two. So this all happens. Yeah. Those are all the actions you take. Okay. Uh, I blast out to our crew like, we're sitting pretty? Same strat? Yep. Okay. I think I'm going to switch up. <clears throat> Excuse me. Switch up comms and bridge, because I think Carmela might have a better bonus to add to the AC. So I'm going to put comms and... comms and bridge? Like I'm going oh, to so... put comms and engineering first to generate Okay, got points. it. I see what you're saying. Comms yeah. and engineering. Go ahead. Call it which one. Uh, comms. You're up. 
yeah, I, I, I do my part. Atlas is, is sending you readings, and, and all of you get telepathic signals, like, uh, you're about to overheat, sir. Please lower it, like, by 5%. And, and then you get another one every now and again, and that's, that's that. So you're doing your duty? Yeah, I'm doing my duty. Nice. So one, you have one command point. Okay. Engineering. Engineering's up. Well, you, call, you call them. You call them, sorry. Yep, engineering. Taking some risks. I'm going to go above and beyond. Ooh. So Ooh. I'm going to push myself to help the ship and crew, pick an attribute and skill check, and explain how I'm using it to help the ship. Uh, and then if Jimmy agrees, we roll a difficulty, and it gives me command points plus one equal to my other. So my skill level in command points plus one. Sounds good. So you tell me what skill you're using, and that bonus to that skill on a success against difficulty nine, mm -hmm. you gain that many command points plus an additional one. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is Barlow is, he's got all these readings for like the, the ship's hull and engine and shields in front of him. Uh, he sees that they fired a glancing shot. So Barlow pulls up the, the ship readings for the shield and lowers them temporarily to boost more power over to the gun so that our Reaper battery can do some nice damage. Okay. So, yeah, what are you rolling? Tell me what, what I'm going to roll programming on that because I'm going to be, like, setting up a, a momentary hiccup in power to fluctuate towards... So you're the... timing, yeah. So you're set up like a, like a, like a specific, like, subroutine that when you know... Basically, it's queued up for when Maximus fires that you're doing this. Yeah. Uh, additional benefit. So yeah, go ahead and roll roll uh roll your program skill. Yeah. I think it's int. Yep, which is perfect for me. Ooh. Boom. Ten beats the nine. Yeah. What's your bonus to program? You get two. Two. So you gain another three command points. Yeah. That you can add to the total. Whew. Uh, yeah, because he has so he has that that uh, focus, Kevin that lets him roll basically three d six. I was gonna say six and take the best. I was say. He just rolled really poorly on it. Yeah, I was gonna say, I saw the red. And I was like, oh no! And I was like, oh, it's a ten. Yeah, <laughs> I saw the same thing too. I was about to be like, I used my no wait, it's fine, it's fine. I just needed to be nine. <laughs> okay, awesome. Uh, I guess I'll go next. I'm gonna support department, and I'll give it to the gunnery again. Okay, so just as a reminder, since you guys are going to have some extra command points for this, when a department's turn come up, comes up, the PC in charge chooses actions, either from their department list or the general actions list. Some actions may require skill checks, etc., while others are automatically successful. Some actions require command points to be spent in order to attempt them, while others give command points. A few prohibit the PC from doing any other action. Barring these actions, a department head can take as many actions as they have command points to spend on them. So you can fire the weapon twice, mm -hmm. Maximus. And I don't think, but there are other ones that says once you do this action, that's the only action you can take. I think they're all specified. So yeah, just as a, that's a reminder to myself more than anything else. Okay. So again, I'm, I'm going to support department f to the gunnery, and um, sure. I don't know. I guess just like clear some sensors and let his targeting array. Um, yeah, what do you say to Maximus here? You just like. A big plasma beam, green, pale green, just shot out and just missed the ship. And you see the Havoc has made some repairs. Yeah, I'm going to uh, say... What do you say to inspire him here? Say, Max, we're going to have Carmella come around the port side, get the Reaper battery ready. Can light him up. <laughs> okay, so we have, we have five points right now, right? Yeah. Four? Five? You, uh, three. So you you have a plus three to program? Yeah. Is that right? So no, I have two. Two, two to program plus the extra points. So I got us three. We had one before that, so we got so four total. Four. So we have so four, you have four total. points, and then you have a reduced point total. So engineering's gone. Uh, bridge hasn't gone yet. Do you want bridge to go before Maximus? That's what I'm debating. Um, Max, how much do you want to target them versus give us a dodge chance with Carmela's piloting take, skills? Take, take, take the dodge, dodge chance. Okay. I'll do bridge first, and I'll tell Carmela to do evasive maneuvers. Yeah, Carmela likes, like... Read my mind, honey. And so she, uh, yeah, so you spent, do you want to spend the, uh, is this the department you want to do the supporting to? Um, I guess it doesn't really matter. It's because they're both going to be two points. So either one, but yeah. 
Okay, so you you point you direct some power to her, and and say like, like clear the comms for a moment, and then you you're guiding, whispering in in Carmilla's ear as she's doing some evasive maneuvers. So she's doing her skill check. Uh, I gotta pull up her stats. Uh, this won't necessarily be um, final roll. Uh, she is proficient. Oh, gotcha. Um, yeah. So evasive maneuvers can only use once per round. Sure. Yeah. Uh, add your pilot skill to the ship's AC. Boom. Nine. She nails it. So she, she like, instigates invasive maneuvers. The ship, it doesn't really feel this way. But the ship rotates 90 degrees and dives underneath. And you, you get basically an open series of shots and a brief flash of moments as you come around the other side of the Havoc. The pilot of the Havoc is completely unaware. So you guys get... She has a plus two. Okay, so you get plus two to AC now? For the yeah, plus two. So you may mark okay. that. So you guys have 16 AC. Okay, I got that. Until your next time. Good. All right, Max, you're and up. You have this brief window when Carmelo says, It's all yours, baby. She's like flying the ship under. You can see actually in your display the havoc sort of beginning to pass <laughs> under you. The underbelly of the Vanderhorn and the Reaper battery exposed. Yeah. What All are right, you Max, doing? Max, you got four I points. Will, Use them as you will. I, uh, I will take my first shot as my guaranteed shot for the fight for eight. Didn't you do that last time? No, I rolled. No. You rolled it, yeah. I got a 26. I mean, 23. Yeah. Oh, no, I didn't even see that. That's fine. So guaranteed. So what do you do? What did you do for target or firing? Jay, I'm just shooting at him. I'm not targeting any systems. Good. Boom. It's a hit. It's. It basically nice, negates nice. the. Uh, it basically negates the the repairs they did. As you come under, you pepper. You're firing the cannon, and like, and you can see it sort of <laughs> these negative energies. And where they like hit, it's not an explosion right now anyway it seems to hit and dissipate but where it goes it leaves like a wreckage of misaligned hull that shouldn't be that way and you can see clear like uh atmospheric like oxygen at, you know venting from the ship from this damage it takes three hit points and is back down to 17. okay yeah knock their gel off you've got two command points left what do you want uh can i take another shot Yep, you can fire the the Reaper battery. The Reaper battery is well charged right now. I hit. Nice. Oh, yes. hit. Nice. Four damage. Nice. Four damage. So same as you're coming around, you pep you continue to pepper the underbelly basically, or or actually you're on top of the havoc. So if you if you can imagine in space, the the underside of the the Vanderhorn is positioned over top of the havoc, and it's just like and these charges are going off with little sound of explosion, um, and then you peel away. Uh, after that hit, uh, the captain of the Havoc is um, is not liking how his, how his crew is handling things right now and chooses to negate that hit and take a crisis instead. Would you like to roll the d10? I will roll the d10. Seven. Yes! Seven. Hull breach. Yes. <laughs> Bam. So we start seeing people <laughs> vented off into space. Yeah. So this makes perfect sense. Uh, I gotta pull up what acute versus um, the other thing a continuing are. I think acute is actually better because it's you can manage it. Uh, yeah. So once per round, shift and choose accept a crisis or take a hit. Do so immediately after damage is rolled, and only one player does it. Play that damage. damage. Crises are cute. They inflict no immediate negative consequence, but the PCs don't resolve it by the end of the next round. So something something needs to be... They will need to resolve something now. They didn't take the HP damage, but... As I said, you are peppering the ship above it, and one hit goes uh, particularly hard. Um, they shoot an X. And you can see... You hit off, um, like, a non... It's The ship has... This patrol boat has various fins that are allowed for aerodynamic balance, basically, when it goes in atmospheres to be able to pilot accurately. And you basically... One of these large fins and the whole infrastructure underneath has come loose. 
and is like is not flapping but is venting like all of the like oxygen of the ship and there's sparks flying everywhere and this piece looks like it is about to dislodge and if it dislodges it's liable to do serious damage to the engine systems behind it so yeah you get carmelo crackle over and say fuck yeah look at that they're sitting ducks in just a moment they got some serious shit to deal with to the extent of if they if we don't resolve it, two uh, d ten um, damage to the ship if this isn't resolved properly. Yeah, good shit. Okay, dealing with a crisis. Ooh. Probably take their. They won't be able to heal themselves either if they're dealing with that. So Depends on who goes in. It doesn't cost command points, but it is difficult. Plus or minus two, depending on the action. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm going to roll on this. Um, how do I... Can I make crises easier to deal with? Let me see it's ship crises real quick. Just reading some quick rules. Hold on one second, guys. Yeah, no worries. We're we're quoting some Star Fox, so we're keeping busy. Yeah. Everyone, everyone here. You you saved Falco in the first level, right? You know, I might have thrown some bombs at him the whole time, just because fuck Falco. What do you mean? Falco is the fucking best. <laughs> I guess Ugh. I should be thankful. It's like, what an <laughs> asshole. Yeah. So, the way I'm going to deal with this crisis, because it is severe, um, it's kind of at my discretion, and I can only use, or they had... The rules advise that an NPC ship can only take a crisis on once per combat at all. I think this is a good time to take it on. It's fine. Um, so they're going to deal with the crisis, and uh, basically the whole crew is committed. Um, and because he commits the whole crew, they're not going to fire their weapon this round. Uh, what they are going to do is because the whole crew mobilizes to do this is instead of a normal d10 or rather a difficulty 10 check uh they're essentially doing the emergency repairs check which is okay. a difficulty eight so at the sacrifice of spending command points elsewhere i'm going to say that they can succeed this at difficulty eight instead of ten is that fair in terms of you don't feel that's you're the yeah, space master good. man you're following rules yeah, you're good oh, you're good. Dude, you're cheating. I don't like it. Uh, <laughs> I think you should just give us the ship. Hold dead hands. <laughs> ship crew plus two. Uh, I rolled one point lower before. That's fine. No, I did it correctly. Plus two. Boom. Eleven. Hmm. So you see the ship. It breaks away. And as it breaks away, you can see actually like... Um, actually visibly because you're close enough to the ship for a brief moment somebody pop up and they've got like an atmosphere they've got a vac suit on <laughs> and they're in with a tool and they're cutting and they dust back down and it's a brief moment but they seem to take a quick maneuver and as they do the piece cuts away from the ship but it's cut away harmlessly essentially that it wouldn't go back and land on their engine systems and possibly destroy their whole ship so the havoc breaks away and uh, yeah, they're they're still in fight and shape at 17 HP. They've got a damage atmospheric configuration system. Doesn't really matter out here right now. Sure. Um, and yeah, that's its turn. And why don't we, at the top of the Vanderhorn order, take a, a brief break here? Yeah, sounds good. Uh, sounds good. Take a quick break here, guys, and we'll get back with more uh, some ship on ship action. Stay tuned. <laughs> 